Welcome to Raven Talk, the official podcast of the Raven Tribe. The Raven Tribe is a home for warriors on the path and is dedicated to training warriors for the battlefield of life. Visit us on the web at theraventribe.com where you can learn more information on membership, warrior training, as well as links to our official YouTube channel, Facebook group, apparel store, and our official bookstore, Marshall Books. Welcome back, tribe. Today, our special guest is Fernando Figueroa, a leading trainer out of the Dominican Republic who specializes in high-end security, counterterrorism, counter-kidnapping, close-quarter combat, and more. Fernando works extensively with the National Police and the military in the Dominican Republic. He's a published author, having written several books, and he is one of the people that you must take note of when you're looking at this type of training anywhere in the world, but again, especially in the Caribbean. Fernando, how are you today? Thank you for being on the show. Well, my name is Fernando Figueroa. I am the reality-based personal protection Latin America director under the Jim Wagner system. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the martial arts. Well, my brother took Kung Fu, so I decided to take follow his steps and took uh, what is called Angry Tiger Kung Fu in Yonkers, and um, it was uh, pretty good. I also, you know, got into the martial arts or the security field because my father was an alcoholic and, um, you know, I, I lived in a drug infested alcoholic typical Puerto Rican house home. And um, I always wanted to protect my mom, but I couldn't because my father was stronger, bigger than me at the moment. So I always wanted to protect people more weaker than I. Who are some of your most influential instructors? What can you tell us about them? Well, Jim Wagner is definitely one of them um, because he showed me reality of the martial arts. He brought back the war in the the, the word martial art, which everyone people know that it means war arts or arts of war. And not only that, he's a very good uh, person and a Christian brother, so he was very influential in my life and the way I teach at the moment. What kind of teaching are you currently doing? Well, I focus my training more on reality as uh, recent, you know, terrorism's on the rise. So I teach and focus a lot of um, uh, ter- uh, terrorism tactics and how to combat a a, um, a a mass shooting or suicide bombing, stuff like that. Also, on uh, the common street attacks, I focus my training on knife, uh, counter knife, and, you know, stuff that would happen to me on a daily basis or a reality basis when I go out in the street. No competition, no points, no trophies, no belts. What can you tell us about your art? Where did it come from and what is its history? Well, that that would take a whole hour or so, more than an hour to be honest with you. I'm actually writing a book that I've been researching for the past 12 years on the true history of martial arts. And, um, you know, I have photos and researches from Egypt to to India um dispel the myths of the origin of kung fu how all the arts came out of kung fu um the origin of wing chun i mean there's a lot of myths in the martial arts mostly are myths on the martial arts but um yeah it's it's uh what are some of the unique features of your art applications concepts or training methods well some of the unique features of my martial arts are the pre-conflict and post-conflict training um, every martial I teach you the conflict training, which is a basic uh, self-defense, hand-to-hand. But uh, most, if not, eh, they don't teach what happens before or after the conflict. So that's what's unique about uh, my my art. What is your favorite aspect of your art? My favorite aspect is the scenario training. I love the simulations. I like when... Um, uh, Jim Wagner, for instance, or when I teach uh, persons the techniques and the tactics, the pre-conflict, post-conflict, then we go to full-blown scenarios. I mean, we throw garbage on the floor to simulate the streets. If we play in a drunk, we'll um, dash alcohol on, on the body to smell like a drunk. Uh, you never know if that sense, that s- smell of alcohol in the club or something will bring back that memory of the training you, you did and your, your, your tactic will come out right away. Does your art include weapons training? 
Well, yes, we do train in weapons. Uh, we knife, uh, knife disarms and knife's use. Uh, also firearms. And we go also training explosives, uh, uh, how to survive grenades, uh, suicide bombings, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, it, goes, it, it goes beyond the uh, stick. Please tell me something about your teaching career. How did you get started? Well, I got started teaching when I was uh, assistant to Jim Wagner and a lot of his courses, training uh, civilians, special forces, and police. Since 2003, I've been with Jim Wagner. I've been, I've been certified instructor since 2003, and I've been assisting him ever since. And then I also started uh, training in gyms, people who want to learn real self-defense. And now I'm currently the counterterrorism advisor in the close quarters combative trainer for the for the military and the police in the Dominican Republic. What kind of teaching are you currently doing? Well, yeah, just like I mentioned, the, the type of teaching now I'm doing is uh, counterterrorism and hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat for the police and military, also training security forces here on aspect of bodyguarding um, and, and self-defense. Have you ever had to apply your art as a professional or in self-defense? If you have, what lessons did you learn from that experience? Yes, I um, my first experience was applying Kung Fu in a nightclub when I became, became a nightclub security. I was at the time 135 pounds, skinny, I wear glasses, but um, I thought, you know, I was a tough dog. And there was two uh, football teams, rival football teams from universities that came into the club and they started a, a riot and, you know, a rumble and um, started using my Kung Fu skills and not saying that it's very, uh, this happens to anyone, but for me, it did not work at the moment. It was too f uh, fancy, too flashy. And these big guys is, you know, was doing their thing. I got hit by a gray goose bottle in the back of my head. It split me open. I still have the scar. Uh, I fainted, woke up and pulled my own blood. From there, I thought, hey, I have to uh, ch change my tactics. And I'm glad I did. Pumped into the reality-based system and helped me out in a lot of situations, not only in the streets of the Bronx, um, but in a professional level as well. Tell me about some of the current projects that you're working on. Uh, current project right now I'm working on is a, the assassination survival training for um, protection agents. Um, I have a manual that's being used in Korea at the moment and now recently in the Dominican Republic. I uh, trained the first class here um, a couple of weeks ago. and uh, In the next three weeks I'll be training the second class and I'll eventually would like to do a video on that. Tell us about your views on warriorship as a lifestyle. Do you follow any particular traditional path of warriorship? I don't follow any traditional path of warriorship per se, but for me, a warrior is the one that uh, just keeps moving forward no matter what obstacle comes his way. It's not about being the toughest. It's not about, oh, I'll die for my country or I'll die for this. No, it's about moving forward. No, you don't have to die. You need the mentality that I will go home, you know, even if that doesn't have to be the case, but with that mentality that you will go home, your chances of surviving will go up. How have the warrior arts helped you in your life? Well, just like I said, the warrior arts in itself helped me and my upbringing of the same philosophy to never give up. As I told you, I grew up in a uh, uh, drug-infested household. I thought I was going to die. I could have chose the easy way out. And been been a, a a thief, a drug dealer, uh, a thug, whatever the case may be, and no one will blame me because that's my upbringing. My brothers chose that path. I decide not to. I decide to go another path. Left my house at age of thirteen, started sleeping in the streets, sleeping in the cemeteries, and I just wanted to change my life. And I knew there had to be something better than this. So being a warrior is moving forward, stand your ground, and don't let anybody dictate who you are. For the audience at home, give us the name of three books that should be on every warrior's bookshelf, and why. Uh, the Bible, uh, the Book of Five Rings, and the Art of War. Uh, those three there would give you the essence of warriorship, give you the essence of, uh, like I said, the true battle, 
uh, the battle of your mind, which is first you are your 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 own, your own enemy. You're your first enemy. So hey, you get to know yourself, then you know your enemies, and those those three books together, it's phenomenal. What advice would you share with the audience to help them prepare for their own journey? Well, basically, uh, choose your art well. I mean, don't give into the hype of movies, please, or YouTube. Um, the streets is the streets. I mean, there's no mats in the streets. There's no referees that's gonna tell the to, to tell the bad guy to stop stabbing you or, or whatever. So you know, just choose your art wisely. I'm not here to bash any art. Just choose it wisely. Please tell us where the audience listening can reach out to you if they want to learn more about you, your training, and the things that you have to offer. Well, right now I'm in the Dominican Republic, but you can uh, go to Figaro Protection on Facebook or FigueroaBooks.com. Right there, I'll have all my contact information. Fernando, thank you again for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. Hope to have you on again soon. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. As always, a pleasure and honor. Um, And look forward to uh, working with you in the future.